Today, we are welcoming you to our virtual as well as our live worship service. God bless you as you I enjoy the this Lord experience here at the Rima Seventh-day Adventist Church, a place you can call home. One of the things that resonated with me in, in the January 10 days of prayer, I don't know how many of you followed that 10 days of prayer, but one of the things that resonated with me was one of the writers that said, why do we spend so much time talking about prayer and what we should pray about when we could just simply pray about it? And I've come to recognize that we have a lot of talk about prayer, but hardly enough 
prayer equating to the talk. <laughs> so we, now I, I don't have a problem with talking. Eh? I'm a son, Bryce. So I don't have a problem with talking. So I am not saying do not talk. I'm simply saying, however, when it comes to prayer, we should do a whole lot more talking about what to pray for and pray for what we should be praying for. So today I'm going to engage you to pray. So there are some things we'll have to say as we talk about it, but the fact of the matter is we are going to pray. <laughs> because it's prayer and fast, right? Right. So the difference between today and last week was that last week we had sermons, this week we have in prayer. Is that okay? So we will start now, and I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and you are going to pray privately. You could pray it out loud if you want. You can pray in your mind if you want, but take 30 seconds, and I need you to be very specific with God here as you pray. You're asking him to make this session a relevant, pertinent, empowering session to you. All right, so we're starting now, 30 seconds, we all praying. Our Father and our God, you have brought us here. We have come at your invitation. And today, we are asking of you that you become very real to us. We are praying today, O oh God, that as we speak, as we talk, as we discuss, but as we engage ourselves in your presence, may that empowering presence be experienced. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. So, since we're talking, I'm going to deal with prayer in the family specifically. Prayer in the family. There are two things perhaps that we need to, to try to get some consensus on. One is what is family and two on what is prayer. So that if we're going to talk prayer and family, then we should have a fair idea as to what those two things are. Dr. Chinalio, you think so? Yes. <laughs> so, I'm picking on Dr. Chinalio because he's a familiar name, you know. <laughs> so, they, they are... so, what is family? Let's start with that. What's family? What, 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 what would you describe as family? Um, you don't need to go and Google it, but, but what do you think is family? Some, somebody help me out. Sorry? People sharing the same space and sharing the same values. All right. So, say again? And sometimes... And sometimes are blood related, and sometimes are blood related. Okay, right. So meaning that they need not be blood related, right? Uh -huh. Anybody else want to vent here? It's not a competition. You're just sharing. We're talking. Yes. Okay, so, right, so you're highlighting, um, the first one highlighted the space and the sharing, you're highlighting the relationship, right? Um, that may be blood-related. Okay. <laughs> yes, um, we do have, we do have, so, somebody else, somebody else, we, 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 now, I'm not going to ask you to say it again, all right, because we don't have time. 
So if family is based on, on, on relationships, it's based on ancestry, it's based on shared values and space, and, and, and so we can declare that we are family here. We can declare, I hope, that we are a praying family. So let's talk about prayer a little bit now. <laughs> well, I know what Sister White said, so don't tell me what Sister White said. Tell me what you interpret Sister White say. What Sister White said. How you interpret what Sister White said. What is prayer? What, what do you consider to be prayer or praying? Exposing yourself to our God. That's right. Okay, exposing myself to our God. Anybody else? What do you consider to be prayer or praying? Talking to God as talking to a friend. I was like, white say. I want to know what you think that means. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, all right, very well. That, that's, that's okay, that's okay. For me, prayer is, this, of, is the soul's sincere desire, uttered or expressed. All right, the soul's sincere desire, uttered or expressed. Uh, your hand was up. Your hand was up. I'm seeing. No, no go up though. <laughs> so, uh, so, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Prayer to me is the communication line we have with the Most High. So, the creature having the opportunity at any time, 24 7, silent, loud, whatever it is, to communicate with the Creator. All right, so the, the creature has him the opportunity and privilege to communicate with the creator. All right. So, yeah, we have, we have, I'm seeing a hand waving in the back there, yes. And the beautiful part about prayer, you pray anytime, pray out a season, pray out in season. Anytime you cry out to God, he answers you and fulfills his need. I love that part about praying. All right, okay, so, so we, we, we branch off a little bit, right, in terms of, of what are the benefits of prayer and so on, the experience of prayer. So I, I want us to just see a little bit about prayer as it is demonstrated in, in, in slightly different ways in the scripture. So... The disciples came to Jesus and asked them, um, teach, me how to, teach us how to pray. You know, we, we hear you praying and so on. We, we like that. Uh, tell us how to pray. Now, in Luke, before Jesus actually gave them the, what we now know as the Lord's Prayer, what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, he gave them a parable. And, and to me, that was very significant in terms of Jesus' parable before Lord's Prayer. He gave them a parable that I simply refer to as three loaves at midnight. And Jesus said to them that a friend was on a journey and he went to the home of a of friend and he called out to him at midnight and asked him for, I have nothing to give him to eat so you could give me three loaves, lend me three loaves please so that I could, I could feed him. And of course, the guy was a little disturbed at midnight. You come in to ask me for bread. But the friend was insistent, and so he got up, and he got his three loaves so that he could feed the friend. And I, I, I said, but why is Jesus telling them this kind of funny story when they ask him to, pr to teach them how to pray? And a significant thought came that Jesus was really speaking about one of the critical purposes of prayer. Prayer is not a gimme, gimme, big Santa Claus scenario. Prayer is really when I am given a blessing by the giver, what do I intend to do with that blessing? Is that blood God does is respond to the prayer of the righteous, not to the prayer of Sister Natalie, because Sister Natalie is not in a position to pray. 
That is where you come in. Because you see, the release of Sister Natalie will come not because Sister Natalie, but because righteous people are praying and God responds to the prayer of, that, of the righteous. So Natalie receives release not because Natalie is doing something that uh, their prayer, I am here. Because it is prayer in the family. So, so th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, hey, hey, this is your mic. <laughs> so, you believe the scripture when it says that we were made in the image of God, right? That, that scripture, scripture says that, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and then scripture goes on to say and he did exactly that he created he them in his own image and likeness but what does what does it mean to be made in that image and likeness well what does it include i can't explain that whole thing to you because i don't understand that whole thing but what it includes is it is, is based on how i see god operates so the fact of the matter is the earth was without form and void. It was dark. And what was God's response to that? God's response to that was, where there was void, he created. Where there was dark, he put light. Where, where it was without form, he put order and structure. Because that is God's creative power. That is God's creative, um, well, godness. There was some godship in us. That causes us to have the ability to respond to certain things. And I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying this because when, when, when our brothers are in darkness and certain revelations come to us, I often hear people talk about why, so they ain't seeing that? Why they ain't do that? Why? I want to don't think that because you see it, everybody's seeing it. There are things, spiritual things that spiritually discern. And if God gave you that vision to see it, then more than likely he's giving you the responsibility to deal with it. Don't stand up and wait about who not treating with it. You saw We're going to be praying as a family for... Let me call it out for you. I don't know which one of these you will pray for. But I don't want to forget what, what the Lord laid on my heart. I don't want to forget it, so I write it down. <laughs> so we're going to pray for A dedication of our church family to serve God based on revelations given. To serve God based on revelations given. When I say revelations, I don't mean the book of Revelation. Well, it might include that. But I'm talking about things that you see need to get, get, to, need to get fixed that you will respond to fixing it. To serve God based on revelations received. We're going to pray for God to release visions on us. In other words, if you don't have a vision yet, then ask God for one. There are things he may have shown to you that we're praying for us to be able to respond to that. And if he showed you nothing, then I am sure God didn't just have us here for as blank stones. Right? It means that what we're going to do is to pray and ask God to grant us that vision. Give us that revelation. Show us something. Tell us something. 
We're going to pray for unity in the family. And we're talking about families now, not just the church family, but we're talking about we do have, we do have challenges in our families and our homes under those same roof. All right? But we pray for those three things first. And then we'll have a prayer of, of, of thankfulness. We'll have a prayer of thankfulness. But the prayer has to be very straightforward, direct prayer. Have you ever noticed Peter's prayer? Peter's prayer when he was thinking, <laughs> Lord, save me. Start and end of prayer. Lord, save me. For the persons who are very articulate and so on, so we don't want to take that giftedness away from you. But they are not absolutely necessary in terms of, of your expression to God. All right? Some prayers are a little longer. Some prayers are conversational. Blind Bartimaeus had a conversational prayer. Right? Lord, son of David, have mercy upon me. And Jesus stop and respond and say, what do you want? And he say, well, I want to see receive my sight. And Jesus, you know, a conversational prayer. And God is responding to him incrementally. And that's, that's fine. But some prayers are just basic, strong, direct. So however you choose to pray, I want you, I want you to, to pray. I, I, we, we have... I'm, I'm going to call him Brother Christostom because I know him as one of my elders in good news. Well, these days, you ought to borrow him a little bit or reborrow him. You know? <laughs> so I'm going to call on him to do a closing prayer, but I want to leave a space for you to pray. You remember what we are praying for, right? We are praying for you to respond to the vision that God has placed in your heart. You're praying for God to grant you a vision if you do not have one. And you, you are praying for unity in our family, our church family, and in our nuclear family. Right? So we are, we're praying for those three things. And then Brother Chris is going to pray a short prayer just to cover this, this, um, this episode that we're going to do now. So I'm going to give you two minutes. Pray to pray, talk to God, privately, personally, based on the three things that we mentioned there. We pray.
and work for others so they themselves could be ready. I know, God, one day all our prayers will be a reality. Face to face, we see you in Jesus. When we can say, oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh, Lord, praise and thanks and glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. So, based on my time piece, our time has expired. <laughs> so, I, I just want to leave with you something that has become somewhat of a mantra with my own prayer life. And it, it came about because I was, well, having born in Blanchishes, you know, being born in Blanchishes, country has a sort of um, appeal to me. So I, I, I have my best, my best times in the countryside. And <laughs> I was having a devotion. I was in Matlot actually a morning. And so I was just having my devotion, just looking at the mountains, seeing some birds fly across the trees and so on. And I'm just pittering it and enjoying it, you know in my little quiet moment there. And then, the Spirit said something to me that has stayed with me. I wrote it down. And I actually had it in my office. I stuck it in my office. And it's something I, I, I've shared with people now. Because I, I think it's a significant truth in terms of our prayer. And it's, the Spirit said to me, pray more. Not for God to do what you want, but for you to want what God is doing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pray more, not for God to do what you want, but for you to want what God is doing. And, you know, to me, that was, that was a revelation to me. Not what I want. It's not for God to respond to my want, but for me to respond to what God is doing. And, you know, that has, that has revolutionized the way that I pray and the way that I, I, I look at life and what I petition God for and what I pursue and insist on and those kinds of things because it is... For me, and that's why once the white says that prayer does not bring God down to us, but it lifts us up to him. <laughs> so it's not God trying to fix what we want fixed, but it is we are making the adjustments in our whole life values and systems and everything to align with what God is lining up. And when we, when we get to that approach, then we recognize that when we pray more and more, thy will be done, that it will in fact be done. Because what we want is what God is doing. <laughs> yeah? So may God bless us. Have a wonderful um, rest of the day. And I trust that our session would have been some, some benefits, some level of empowerment. May God bless us. Have a great day.